So Oscar, um, I was noticing in your book, like the in, in the intro, the dedication, Philip Aaron McKenzie. Yes. Um, uh, tell yeah. me about your connection with him. Um, it's a long story, but yeah, like uh, when he he did his uh, Europe tour, he went to Estonia. I was living in Estonia, and actually, it started with that I had an, the interest that I want to get a prophecy. So I started to write to people on Elijah list. Yeah, so I started to write to them and said, "Okay, hello, my name is Oscar, and I'm from Sweden, and." Do you have a prophecy for me? And the only one that answered was Aaron. So, and God told him that I wanted to stay in, in contact with Oscar. So he came, uh, I invited him first to Sweden and, and spent some time there. So he spent three, four days at our place and released this glory, this glory assignment that he had. Have you connected um, since then to your own assignment, you know, and just like, and could you tell me more about like what, what you feel that would, that is, what's your, well, I, I'm still kind of, uh, um, still finding it out and working it out, but I believe one of the assignment is to awake the passion and the desires in people's heart to, to be intimate and close to Yeshua and, and to the father. And, and to hear his voice yeah. and, and to, to realize that that he is intimate and he wants to be personal with you. That's beautiful. Yeah, I can. I definitely stand behind that message. I'm actually working on a book right now, which I've been working on for a while. I feel like the book's, book's been working on me. God's mm. been working on me, you know, uh, through the writing of it and through the refining of it. And mm. really the overwhelming message and, you know, what being a mystic truly is all about is that word intimacy. Yeah. And uh, I once was at a, a, a friend's wedding. He was actually a, a drummer for our band. Mm -hmm. And he, his, the pastor there just unpacked that word intimacy as into me, you see. Yeah. And, and that really meant a lot to me because that's the way I see it is like intimacy is all about about really seeing into the other person, seeing into God and God seeing completely into you. And when yeah. we when we make ourselves vulnerable to him, we realize, you know, his vulnerability towards us and mm -hmm. we're able to really see him clearly and truly. Yeah. That. So intimacy yeah. is what it's all about. Yeah, and what I always say is that I want to get to know the author of the book, not just the book, the Bible. This is just the beginning. Yeah. And I believe, I want to know what kind of feelings does the father have about me? What, what is he thinking right now? What does he want to do? Like, that is what takes me. Yeah, absolutely. And if I were to respond to that what co comes to mind is uh the scripture where jesus says and this this is a verse that really arrested me back when i was in bible college and barely knew god at all really um i was reading in the scripture in john where jesus says you search the scriptures diligently thinking mm. that by them you have life mm. they are that which testify of me yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life you know yeah. and uh and that was a real, um, it was, a, it's, a, it's kind of a rebuke. Yes. But it's also a, a profound invitation. You know, just, just last night I was driving around thinking, you know, like at what point do, cause I, I've seen and noticed a lot of like, we're always approaching God with an, I'm sorry, you mm -hmm. know, like why, are, why are we so sorry all the time? You know? Mm -hmm. And, and like, there's a quote that you've probably, you might not have heard. I don't know if you've heard this before, but it there's a quote that says, love means never having to say you're sorry. Mm. And, and like, what if we graduated into actually loving him and him, of course, loving us and us maintaining this love connection where it's not like we're not offending one another all the time. We're not doing things uh, against love, against love and 
And and really the way I see it is like you're being in love with love mm. because God God is love, right? And so we're not doing harm against love. We're no longer waging war in our minds against love. When mm. you know, is it really that hard? Or <laughs> when are we gonna drop the yes, I'm Christian so and so and my middle name is name is I'm sorry, you know, because that's <laughs> that's that's yeah. really what we're walking around with. Um by and large as a as a i don't know it's just what i've noticed in christianity mm -hmm. and yeah. through my own personal experience i'm like this is tiresome <laughs> you know so yeah or I'm those not... people that say it's that oh sorry you want to say something no go ahead those people that say okay how are you doing i asked them and i say yeah i'm blessed uh i'm so good i'm i'm just blessed and the thing is that i'm not able to connect with them then like i'm not expecting them to have the perfect answer i'm just uh, explaining them to be transparent and to show how they really feel that's how i'm able to connect with them yeah like what's really going on right? yeah in that, in that heart of yours in that mind of yours yeah um, how can we be true f friends and and really yeah. open ourselves up to one another being vulnerable is a good word um, yeah that, that goes along with uh, intimacy what is what is intimacy this is what i was going to ask <laughs> is um what does intimacy mean to you and 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 um how have you how have you grown in that over the years with with god and with others mm, well i believe intimacy is when you you choose to put down your walls so that others can like see what's really going on inside of you and you desire to or you, you desire and you dare to be transparent and show what's really going on inside of you. Like God wants us to, to, to show what is really happening inside of me. He wants us to be vulnerable. He's not looking for us to, to be in a certain way or to act in a certain way. That's not what he is after. He after us being honest with what we feel and telling him about it. And for me, intimacy is about when, when I dare to talk about my weaknesses to my friends and without having fear that I, they will judge me because I have made mistakes in my life and some things I'm not happy about, but those things doesn't define me. Yeah. And when we dare to share those things, that's when I see true intimacy. Yeah. It, it reminds me of a powerful encounter I had with God once. I had this amazing God dream. And mm -hmm. um, there was at one point in the dream, like uh, all of a sudden God just stepped in. Like, and, I, and what stood out to me most of all was his holiness. Mm -hmm. and, and really, in the, you'll never understand the word holy unless you catch the flavor of it by encountering the one who is holy. And the way I, the way I would really describe holy is like perfect in all of his qualities, perfect mm. in every quality. And, and most of all love, most of all love. And so I was encountering him in that perfection of all his qualities and most of all love. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. Like, like I um, wanted to impress him. I wanted to somehow come across in a way that pleased him. I wanted to, you know, say something that, you know, and he, and he shushed me right away. Like before I even opened my mouth, because he knew it was coming. He shows up and, and he's just like, don't tell me what you think I want to hear. Mm. And don't put words in my mouth either. Like you be you and let me be me. And let's mm -hmm. be real. Yeah. And at that point, like my my spirit just like just like was drawn like a magnet right into his being. And I just as I was absorbing, you know, melding with his being, mm -hmm. I was waking up at the same time and I was feeling all these vibrations and it was pretty epic, pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're yeah. from you're from Sweden, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, tell me what that's like. Like, what? Uh, is, do you live near the ocean at all? Um, 
I'm living in Stockholm usually. Okay. But but now I'm in a little bit more in the north, so it's like two hours away. Uh, we have a, a sea here, but not ocean. But we have a sea where you can swim, and yeah, it's warm during the summer. Uh, but in Stockholm, it's built on on islands, so we have uh, we have water around there as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But on the coast, yeah, we have sea or ocean, as you call it. Yeah. 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 yeah I was so. just curious because I, I mean, like, what is that like? <laughs> um, what it's like? I mean, Sweden is uh, is a country that is really educated, and people really know how to, be, to how to behave and how to like act good, but uh, they are not so open with how they are feeling. Huh? Uh, they don't show themselves vulnerable or they can be really nice when you meet them uh, in the beginning, but when you get close to them, they don't really care about you. Hmm. Uh, and and it's in some places in, 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 for example, Estonia or other Baltic nations, it can be the opposite. They look like they want to beat you up because they are look so tough and so sour. That's just because they're not used to show emotions outwards. They don't know that that's how you're supposed to act. Uh, or act. Because then you're not intimate still. Like you're just putting up a nice face. Uh, but they are in... Um, they are hard in the beginning, but afterwards they get really caring. Uh, like when you approach them, they care right away. So I would say Swedes are a little bit... Like they are really nice people, but they have a little bit hard to to connect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is just uh, a human uh, issue that we're working through, you know, in, yeah. in just our our development. I'm not. I was having a conversation with my wife earlier about like World War II era, and mm. it it all sparked from a quote I heard from uh, a book Schwarzenegger Arnold Schwarzenegger put out. Mm. Uh, about like when you know his in his father was around during you know uh you know uh nazi germany and and that going out uh across mm. uh europe and things and yeah. uh he talked about how one there was one young man uh who was a real role model for all the other young men like he was he you know they all looked up to him he was a bit older um, mm -hmm. but, but not as old as his father, but what he said was about him is that he didn't, he wasn't, uh, consumed with regret and shame mm -hmm. over, over the choices that, that people made during the war and, and not standing up against Nazi Germany in, in the way that, you yeah. know, they just, they just did what they did to, to survive. But this young man, did everything he could to oppose it and fight it. And so he came out after the war with just this vitality of his spirit, not being consumed with regret and shame. And I thought to myself, wow, that, that is, that is someone I want to be. I want to be someone who can be that positive force, not being taken out of the game, so to speak of being an influence yeah. in people's lives because I'm being consumed because I've been sidelined by regret and shame over mm -hmm. how I've how I've behaved in life, you know? Yeah. And I I look a lot at, at our lives as like we're characters in a in a story, for instance. You're a protagonist of your own story. Mm. Like your overcoming journey and your character development and Christ being formed in you is is the most important thing. Learning how to come to that place where if Christ is being formed in you, then you are going to be other centered, self-giving love, mm -hmm. you know, sacrificial, um, always serving like Jesus modeled for us, you know, that mm -hmm. servant leader and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But, um, I'm also curious, Oscar, what sort of Christian community have you found? What sort of fellowship and brotherhood and camaraderie of, of uh, um, yeah, well, Aaron has been a, a big help for me. Uh, as you already mentioned, he has been a father figure in spirit and helped me also to to go deeper and closer and like to pursue even more. 
Uh, but like I have, uh, I haven't had most uh, much of like church uh, community around me that wants more because I have all the time wanted more, uh, more than the pastor is talking about, more than I can see around me, and I have just needed to let the spirit lead me, uh, lead me to what to listen to, lead me to what to what to do, where to go, and being kind of like a church jumper. Uh, maybe it has been a bit lonely, but it has been what the path God has taken me on. And uh, and I, he, I have also understood that I get what I what I pray, what I ask for, what I pray about. I get that, and I, I have started to really ask for certain things, and I have have received them. That is amazing, and yeah. what a inspiration and a lesson for us all. You know, what are some of those things that you've prayed for that you have received? Uh, one thing that I remember is patience. I prayed for patience, uh, and it was quite funny. I was quite young then. It was one of the first things I asked for, and I thought, oh, it's so hard to wait. I don't really like it. Give me more patience, God. I want more patience. And I thought, okay, yeah, he will give me patience like this, and then it will be easy. But no, he wait, made me wait even longer. <laughs> so he took me on a waiting path to wait even longer, but I waited so long, so until... Yeah, when he was done, I had patience. <laughs> yeah, that's that's character development right there. Yeah, um, and I was maybe fifteen years old or something when I asked for it. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I yeah. thought, well, God can just give it to me, and it will no problem for me just to do things. But I didn't know it was a price to or a process to go through to get get it. Yeah. I, I also wanted to ask you just about some of your encounters with God mm -hmm. and with, with Jesus in particular, if you have any stories to share about, about that, what comes to mind? Yeah. Um, well, I have had quite, quite many of them, but uh, one that's quite funny and has also defined my life pretty much, and I'm, I'm trying to come back to it, is uh, I saw Jesus... Uh, I had a vision. I saw him just yawning like this. <sighs> and he was bored. And I was like, okay, so what is this about? Why are you bored? And then he told me, like, when is the body of Christ going to understand that I'm not only with them 20, uh, like uh, uh, two hours a day? I'm not only with them when they're reading the Bible or when they are uh, worshiping or when they're in church but I'm with him all the time. And uh, like, he thinks it's boring that we are not with him all the time. Like if that, the thing is that we need to be aware of it. When we're aware of his presence, that's when he's there already. Like, and, and I went through a time where I, I was, I don't know, spiritually burned out or something like this, that I couldn't read the Bible or and unless it felt fake. I couldn't uh, like worship unless it felt fake, and like everything else felt dull for me. And uh, I started to do other things. And God told me, "Oh, go and watch anime, or go and watch this movie." Or and then when I did it, His presence just came so strongly on me, and I started to cry. And He said, "Like, do you see this guy over there?" "Yeah, I do." "This is how much I love you." And then just the tears just started to, to flow. Like, and He took took me on a journey where I understood that. We just need to be aware of his presence. And that's when he's already there because he's inside of us already. He's already there. We don't need to reach somewhere to get to him. We just need to pause and think about, okay, God, you love me. You're already here. Yeah. It reminds me of uh, Brother Lawrence and his little book, uh, Practicing the Presence of God. Yeah. And before we go any further, I just wanted to mention to everybody listening that you have a book called How to Hear God's Voice. Yeah, that's correct. Little little book, uh, just laying out the truth. I mean, I I love how you use a lot of the the Passion Translation. It really uh, brings out uh, some real flavor of the message that's that God wants to communicate with us through that. Yeah. Through uh, yeah. just sharing his heart, what's on his heart? What would he? What would he really sound like? And you know, 
he speaks our language like to really connect well with us that's a really cool vision that you had um about yeah. jesus yawning and i'm like oh that's that's so cool and, I, and i'm wondering what other kind of uh, experiences have you had with him i'm i'm just uh eager to hear more about <laughs> well your encounters yeah like uh like i had one like i have found out that god has, has humor and another one i had was that i was on a healing conference and ryan clark was there and also bill johnson and they they challenged us all that we were there we were maybe two or three hundred people they challenged us like and said like you guys need a real encounter a god encounter because that will help you like ask for a real god encounter and uh, and i i said to him okay god hit me with your best shot like i really want something like really hit me with my, your best shot and then afterwards we went and they were praying for importation so he and uh, i think uh, uh, like bill johnson and ryan clark and also another guy called bob something i don't remember his name now uh, they prayed for us and we were all standing up in a line and the line was all of them were standing in a line in the, in the whole conference and uh, they went and prayed for one 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 and then i i heard them coming closer 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 and then they they, they put my, their hands on me and then first uh after that uh like they, they left and i still thought they were putting their hands on me but there was no one there I opened up my eyes i was standing alone and then uh, suddenly I just feel like a, 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 a smack or like a hit in my stomach and went, like this. And it was like God hitting me, <laughs> hitting me literally, but in with the spirit, like really hitting me. And I was like, I couldn't stand up or anything. Like I was feeling like I had done maybe 100 sit-ups or something like this. Oh. <laughs> so he literally took my, <laughs> my prayer like so i needed to go and sit down later yeah hit me with your best shot yeah yeah i've i too have noticed uh jesus sense of humor you know when i uh gosh i asked him to tell me a joke once uh -huh. uh, i would challenge everybody to do that ask god <laughs> to tell you a joke and he'll mm. lead you to the you know comedy is situational right the mm. best comedy is situational so he'll lead you into situations that you're just like oh my gosh hilarious right <laughs> hilarious so um but like when i i had an encounter with jesus and he had a huge smile on his face mm. and when he approached me uh he uh he did the sign of the cross on me as a joke mm. like like uh as an inside joke like mm. um he's just funny you know <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, yeah, I love mm. his sense of humor and that he gets you and he gets your sense of humor. And we can, yeah. like you said, you know, you can watch movies with him. I watched a movie with Jesus last night and I was just enjoying his presence when yeah. I did so, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah and, and he's so non-religious. Like, yeah. it's not that, okay, okay, God, now you come and you show up in this way. No, you show, he shows up however he wants to. And he can ask us to do whatever, whatever. Like there is basically no borders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. One thing I feel like Holy Spirit is uh, highlighting or wanting to, to to steer the conversation toward. You know, mm. I was just reading in First uh, Corinthians thirteen. You know, and 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 about I'll show you a, a greater way. That's how that's how chapter twelve ends. I'm going to mm -hmm. show you a greater way. And then it goes into love mm -hmm. and really like saying, if you, if you understood all prophecies and every mystery mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. but had not love, yeah. then, then what you're, it's nothing. You're nothing. It, it yeah. amounted to nothing. Like the importance of love, mm -hmm. even if you sacrificed all and gave everything to the poor and even sacrificed your body, mm -hmm. but had not love, like you can mm -hmm. do all these things but not have love mm. and you know how jesus spoke to the pharisees and he says i know you that the love of the father doesn't dwell in you mm. and i and i just I, 
I just want to pray for all of us for mm. just that, just for that love and fusion, you know, yeah. that he'd pour his love into our hearts and that we would, mm. we would awaken to that, yeah. that we would display his character of love. I really see it as coming into our true identity as well. Mm. We're created in the image of love mm. and, and meant to, you know, be, Love is patient. Love is kind. Love holds no records of wrongs. Love always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. The mm -hmm. whole First Corinthians passage, and then and then then it says, "Let love be your highest goal." That's how John fourteen one starts out. But then it says, "But also earnestly desire the spiritual gifts." So mm -hmm. that like just establishing, okay, love is our highest goal. Uh, in what ways have you discovered or walked in some of these spiritual gifts? Mm. Um, what do you mean? Like just generally, like what kind of gifts or, or you mean love or? Oh yeah. Just like <clears throat> even like speaking in tongues, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of an interesting one. You know, yeah. like, like the apostle Paul said, uh, I wish you all spoke in tongues mm. and, um, or, you know, gifts of uh, healing or mm -hmm. miracles. Um, has that has that been? Um, have you experienced much of that in your in your walk so far? I'm I'm just curious. Yeah, I have. Um, like God likes to use me in in the gifts of the spirit, uh, both discernment, uh, prophecy, tongues, healing. Uh, all of them he, he's using me in uh and i believe it's supposed to be normal it's normal christianity yeah normal uh, and like it says in the bible put the hands we put the hands on the sick and they will be healed and uh, like then we will prophesy as well uh, and like i i choose or i my desire is that god would use me as however, however he wants to do like that if he wants me to go somewhere i go there and if he wants me to say something, I say that. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> that's also why I wrote this book because he told me to write it. Uh, and at first I, I saw myself as disqualified. I didn't see that I have something special to say about it, but God said that uh, like, I will use you. I will speak through you and just trust in me. Yeah. But, but as you were saying already, like, the biggest gift is not the spiritual gift. It's it's the love, like a red to love, even the unlovable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because he'll send us he'll send us our tests. You know, those yeah. people people in our life, like, oh, this is kind of reaching my love limit. You <laughs> yeah. know, <laughs> and we have to overcome. We it's part of our protagonists journey that character yeah. arc of us discovering where those limits are mm. and then you know overcoming persevering mm. pressing pressing through um, yeah. letting christ in you the that hope of glory um, yeah and uh, like god showed me like he's, he's quite frank with me now i i realize like he 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 showed me that I'm tired of the body of Christ running away or being so immature uh, and running away from what I want to use to bless them. And in, in, the, in the beginning, I didn't really understand what he said, but then he said, like, okay, they ask for love and I put them around a person that's hard to love, that will grow in them the cap cap capability to love. But instead, they pray it away. They pray away what I want to use to bless them. And like, if I want to learn how to love, I need to learn, I need to be around a person that it is a little bit harder to love. It takes a little bit more energy to love because that would grow my love muscle. muscle. Same if I want to have patience, I, he puts me to wait. If he wants me to have joy, he puts me in a sad situation where I need to choose to focus on the right thing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, he's uh, orchestrating. Uh, all of heaven is conspiring to uh, toward our spiritual growth. 
you know and yeah. just like you said it's so so amazing and you know it can seem challenging it's like it's it's like a movie you know like uh, i've watched uh recently I, my wife and i finished watching loki mm. uh disney uh you know marvel movie right yeah i i like so, loki as well yeah yes it's just it's just amazing here's here's a guy who you know for all practical purposes on the surface level we all saw as the the villain and just completely selfish and you know etc but but then you okay let's take a closer look you know and then and, and then the character development of like yeah i was putting on an act you know and here's what's really going on in me and yes i do want to be you know a uh, a good guy eventually and a hero and working towards that and working out all this unselfishness um the character arc <laughs> you know of like we're all we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of god there there's um you know have we all been narcissists for instance you know in, in the way it's just we've been so self-absorbed mm. but like to to realize okay that other version of me to serve them, to love them, to lay down our lives and, and such. And um, yeah. I yeah, think I'm trying... yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, you, you go ahead. But I'm, I'm very... It's easy for us to, to start to think that I need to earn something. Like I need to be a certain way and that I'm good enough. And then I, I know that I qualify and then I get what I believe I am supposed to have. Yeah. You really touched on something there with feeling unqualified and uh, that was one thing i liked in the beginning of your book was just like you're part of god's family you you deserve this you deserve mm -hmm. the the right and ability to reach out to your father uh, in this family and to receive what you need uh, yeah. in your journey and to you know quoting that scripture verse uh, about boldly coming before his throne of grace and mercy to mm. receive help in our time of need and i i use that verse often mm. you know? yeah. and it's 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 most helpful for me to to know that this isn't a performance relationship mm. i don't need to perform my way into being acceptable or uh um you know uh worthy yeah, yeah. you know when the blood of christ declares us all worthy and and that we're you're created were created worthy he said it is good you know and mm. um yeah 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 <laughs> so um the gift of prophecy that is mm -hmm. one that that paul highlights as one of the premier you know important gifts to convey and the way i've always looked at prophecy is like thought like tuning into father's heart tuning into yeshua and saying what's on your heart for this person and i also love in the scripture how it says prophecy is to strengthen comfort and encourage yeah. the, the other and that was one thing i prayed for a lot i was like lord i want this gift the gift mm -hmm. of prophecy mm -hmm. to be able to speak into this other person's life you know whoever whoever it may be yeah. you know um in a public setting or one-on-one -on -one. yeah and and also what prophecy does is that it helps other people to connect to the truth and connect to the real character of the father yeah yeah and connection is the point yeah because they cannot see because they have some fog or some mountain in front of them so they don't see the whole picture but what prophecy does or is supposed to do is to to help them to see what's behind or what's above. Yeah. Now, Oscar, uh, yeah. I wanted to start this with, have you ever heard the song, Oscar is Awesome? <laughs> no. It is so funny. You, you would love it. Uh, <laughs> here, I'll just read some of the lyrics to you, okay? It's, it's, uh, it's hilarious if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Oscar is awesome. I wish I were Oscar because he totally owns it right now. Type awesomely awesome into any browser. The first 50 hits are pictures of Oscar. His legend is so legendary. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> it's it's so great. 
And mm. then, then it, like the next part is like, Oscar's awesome. And then Oscar says, well, it was more of a group effort. Dude, you got a hundred times more awesome for giving credit where credit is due. Oh mm. yeah. Did I mention Oscar is awesome? <laughs> It's hilarious. So what what we do in our family, we we substitute out the word uh, in the name Oscar and just like sing it over each other, and mm. it's just like it's just like so affirming, like such a like you know praising one another. We don't do it enough, you know. We're just yeah. so, mm, you know, like uh, I, I I remember near death experience stories where people will will die and go into heaven, and, and it and they're like it seemed like they were worshiping me. I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't get it. Like what's going on. You know, and yeah. it's basically we're, we're so unused to like people praising us, but God, God would praise us, you yeah. know, like, wow, you're doing such an awesome job. I know it's been hard, but you, uh, yeah. you're, you're doing great along your journey. Mm. Right now. I know that's, it's been hard tests. Life is, you know, life will do that. Yeah. I've wow. designed it that way. It's earth school to learn how to love, but you're doing yeah. awesome. You are awesome. You know, mm. you hear, hear that from God. Wow. I think yeah. that would be a, a, a prophetic word. That yeah, strengthens, sure. comforts, and encourages us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, like, what I also believe is that we were with God before we came to earth. And I believe that uh, he cannot do anything against our own free will. So he showed us the whole thing, what would happen. We don't remember it, but he showed us and we said yes to it. And I believe that he's so proud of us that we choose to go through this just because we love him so much. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is a, that's a brilliant perspective. Like he said to Jeremiah, you know, before I formed you in the womb, mm -hmm. I knew you as yeah. if to say we were friends, like you, you signed up for this. And that, that is attested to by yeah. near death experience stories as well. Like we have pre-incarnate lives. Mm -hmm. you know, sure. We became a baby. Our minds were wiped. We had to figure it all out from scratch again, but that's part of the, the wonder of it all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's part of the, the magic of it all. Yeah. And, and especially because we're we're on this mission, you know. Um, let's talk about what is your main message that you feel is so worth putting out there that you would risk getting rejected by friends and family and the whole Christian community around you. <laughs> Not to mention all the unbelievers. I don't know why it is that that the Christians are the ones we're most scared of getting rejected by. It's like, it's like almost a value statement, you know, like somehow yeah. they're speaking on behalf of God mm -hmm. and kicking you out of the family. Is that, yeah. is that what we're afraid is going to happen? You know, but sometimes the things that Jesus shares with us that we, that we're feel compelled to share with the world feel a little bit scandalous. Like he's bringing a message of reformation to the mm -hmm. church. You know, like yeah. we're, we're like right along with Martin Luther nailing our theses to the wall of the church saying, Hey, this is important. This needs to be exposed and dealt with. This is a, 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 a firmly held entrenched belief in the Christian community that is wrong that, you know, he, that Jesus would like to, you know, use somebody to, to bring uh, some correction to. Yeah. You know, and correction is a beautiful thing when you think mm. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Restoring one's, uh, you know, self to love and the heart of, of intimacy and all of that and yeah. cutting out everything that doesn't line up with that intimate mm -hmm. relationship with Jesus and that that love exchange, you know, and if, if they're all the religious trappings, you know, need to need to go i don't know yeah. what do you think yeah i mean uh, i believe one reason why we are afraid of how christians see us is because we believe that god is inside of them and we believe that everyone has god but the thing is yes god lives inside of us but it, unless we allow him to renew our mind we're still in the old wineskin we are still in the old uh like 
old Eden or what you should call it, like the place where God used to be, but he's not anymore. Like then we are not in the fresh, fresh freshness. And if you want to get new wine, which means new revelation and new part of God and, and new flow, uh, then we need to remove our own wine skin, meaning our limitations and our borders and our containers. So we can put it in new ones. And I believe that we want, as Christians, we want to be uh, embraced and accepted by other Christians. But uh, even Jesus wasn't accepted by his own people. The Pharisees were his own people, but he didn't wasn't accepted by them. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, true, isn't it? Uh, do you feel like you have a calling that would not be acceptable by the church? For uh, I believe that there is a spirit, spiritual world, and I believe that there is different principalities, and I believe one of them is religion. And yeah, my message is not is not accepted by the religious spirit. And I don't want it to be either. The moment where I feel that it is, then I am out of track. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not trying to cater to the religious spirits. And really, yeah. I feel like that's what I've been been resisting. It's really <laughs> a, like a spirit of an antichrist. You know, I've had dreams <laughs> where people go into churches and demons are perched right there and they'll swoop down and just, you know, land on the people as they enter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a really, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a spirit of the antichrist, you know, and, yeah. and where would the enemy want seek to set up camp? Of course, I, I don't castigate all fellowships that are gathering in Jesus name. I don't, I don't, why would I ever do that? This is a, this is our family. This mm -hmm. is just something that we're all dealing with, and and yeah. I think that it's we're all dealing with it in here, too. Mm -hmm. You know what is what is the religious mindset, the the religious spirit? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, is it a is it a performance? It's a it's a lack of vulnerability. It's a a lack of intimacy. It's a lack of real honesty. But then, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. I worry about stumbling other people if you were if you were to really let everyone in on everything you're struggling with too. I don't yeah. I thought I don't think that's appropriate on a certain level to uh just yeah. put everything out there all the time and just mm -hmm. you know. No, I believe we should share what God says us to share. And if some people are not interested to to hear, then it's just a waste of time and even in the Bible says that don't throw your pearls to the swines. And what does that mean? For me, it means that those that doesn't treasure what you're giving, then don't give it because they will just uh, make it dirty. <laughs> they will yeah. just make it worthless. Yeah, that's a good word. Don't don't give it to people who will not won't won't treasure it. Yeah, uh, I'm actually in a. You know, I put out a blog recently. I was just it was an old blog that somebody made me aware of from 2017 where i was really uh delving into what i was learning from from the shack you know when when that mm -hmm. came whole came out i mean i read the book back in 2008 it's been it made a, a huge impact in my spiritual journey yeah. just reading reading the book but then when the movie came around again mm -hmm. when it came around came out in movie form in 20 i think it was 2017 um but that that again just to delved me deeper into like well what's the theology behind the shack mm -hmm. and in investigating uh ultimate reconciliation <laughs> those ideas or like what you'd call christian universalism i mean a lot of people in, in the in the church have been trained like oh no hear the word universalism red flags you know like uh shut mm -hmm. that person out of your life right resist that mm -hmm. resist that message but because it's been there's been a lot of straw man kind of arguments thrown in mm -hmm. at that and a lot of assumptions what you mean 
by mm -hmm. universalism. One, I mean, one of the best questions that you could ask, you know, William Paul Young, for instance, author of The Shack, is, well, what do you mean when you say, when if you were to use the term universalism, what what does that mean to you? What is it? What is it mm -hmm. are you getting at? And then just to to learn more and. Anyway, my blog was about that, looking into uh -huh. universalism. And then I get somebody coming out of the woodwork, uh, you know, yeah. uh, sending me messages of like, no, of course, eternal con conscious torment is real, you know, and and LOL. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do they include an LOL in that? Like, like <laughs> if it's a, as if it's funny, like this is not, uh, I'm, this is, this is our eternal you know, this is suffering that we're talking mm. about. We're talking about hell. I mean, how could mm -hmm. we take this matter lightly at all? It's one yeah. of the most important issues, I think. I don't know. But, mm. um, but yeah, <laughs> enough about me. What are what are some of the journeys that Jesus has been leading you on in in the area of like what he's what your your calling uh, your mission to what. What are you given by God to share with the world, with the church? Uh, well, I can go back to what I, where I was in the beginning uh, before we finished. Uh, like, I, I was, it was actually a painful situation, but usually he speaks to me when I'm really raw. And like, when I'm really, everything else is just out of place and it's just me, me and him. Uh, like he he likes to use uh, everything and make it turn it into gold, uh, and it was one moment where I was really sad, and I was actually in this place where I'm right now, and uh, um, I like to watch ice hockey, uh, and it used to be my passion, and I I went to watch ice hockey, uh, and I felt no no joy at all, and I was like man not even this gives me joy like what is wrong with me. And I was just like really, really sad. I went to to lay down on a on a bed, and I and I looked up, and in front of me was a flag, uh, fla and it was wind blowing in the flag. And then God told me that, "Do you see this flag?" And I said, "Yeah, I see the flag." Okay, do you see how how it's it doesn't really care about how it looks when the wind blows through it. And uh, and like it gets sometimes it gets bendy and sometimes it's straight. Just let the wind just blow through it. And then uh, he he showed me that you have had a lot of prestige, Oscar. Like you want your life to look in a certain way, and because you believe that's how you will glorify me. And then he, he told me, but what if your life glorifies me when you don't have those things? What if your life glorifies me? When you're still happy and peaceful and uh, like standing with me, even if you don't have those things, because I thought that okay, I need to be married, I need to be uh, without uh, debt, I need to have children, I need to have this or that, and I didn't have those things, and and it made me sad. And then God showed me, but like because I wanted my life to glorify Him, and He even took me back. That's where I want to start. He even took me back to what I said before I went to Earth. Like he showed me what would happen. And then he said, I said to him, okay, he asked me, okay, Oscar, are you ready to go? And then I said, yes, my Lord, or my love, let my life glorify you. Like that was what I said to him. And he showed that to me. And, <laughs> and then I was like, but it's not glorifying me right now. Like what was wrong? Like my life is miserable. And then he showed me the other perspective, like, what if it's glorifying me when the life is miserable in your eyes, but in my eyes, it's it's wonderful. Mm, yes, 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 yes. It reminds me of a quote um, Donald Miller included in one of his books, one of his early books, Blue Like Jazz, where he says, reality is like fine wine, not readily appreciated by children. Mm -hmm. But when we come into the maturity of truly appreciating our life mm. you know in every every motley in every detail like god does mm. like you're saying yeah. god does like it yeah. glorifies him like yeah. even when we're miserable and working through all this stuff i mean i'm currently working through some stuff mm. 
in my yeah. life to be vulnerable to you, Oscar, mm -hmm. my friend. I'm working through some stuff. I'm trying to mm -hmm. figure out what in the heck is going on in Daniel's heart and life. Why, mm -hmm. why, why? You know, and mm -hmm. and like boldly coming before his throne of grace and mercy, mm -hmm. you know, and just saying, if any demons have been attached themselves to me, I'm bringing them too into your glory. Shower them with your love. I pray for their restoration and reconciliation. I pray for these demons to get saved because that's why mm -hmm. we're here. We're here on a rescue mission. We mm -hmm. came, we said, yes, my love, yes, mm -hmm. my liege, yes, my Lord, and signed mm -hmm. up for this life because we're on a rescue mission mm -hmm. to, to save the beloved yeah. in, in all the people that we deem so hard to love and those people in our lives. Yeah. Right? And they might be our mother or our father mm -hmm. or our sister, or our brother that God might have put them really close, put it made them one of your children or your spouse, you know, and the ones that are really hard to love. You might be married <laughs> to them, <laughs> you know, that like, and wow, thanks, God. Thank you, God. I have an appreciation for that now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, for this miserable life where I got to love the most and be up close and personable yeah. with, with those who are hardest to love. Right? Yeah. Right, Oscar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And like, like he also said that, let my life, let my wind just blow for your life the way I want it to look, 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 let my, look, let your life look the way that I want it to look like. Oh, Oscar, I, I could listen to all, all afternoon to just you saying what Jesus has said to you. Please tell me more. Tell me more things Jesus has said to you. I love hearing it. Let the, <laughs> let my wind just blow through your life. The, the flag doesn't care. You shouldn't care either when, yeah. when Christ is being made manifest in your life and you're and you're becoming who you, who I meant you to be, who you've been all along for yeah. centuries before you even incarnated into this existence. You're mm -hmm. coming to life. You're becoming you again. Yeah. It's so beautiful to behold. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and I believe that like one of the reasons why we are here, I have heard it from somewhere else, uh, um, but that the reason why we're here right now is because he wants us to choose him back. Like he wants us with our own free choice to choose him back. That's why we are here on earth right now. So we can choose him for who he is. If we would just be created in heaven and just exist with him it wouldn't be the same love it wouldn't be as precious as it is right now mm, that is beautiful yeah carry on <laughs> the floor is yours <laughs> okay yeah and like uh, as I, i've already written a book about it how to hear god's voice i've also tried to practice it in my life i tried to uh Sometimes more than others, but just to to lean into his heart and listen to what he's thinking, or or just being active to what he wants to say because he wants to speak to us all the time. But I believe the thing is that we are not ready for that he speaks to us all the time. That's why we don't hear him so often. But he showed me one time when we really touch his heart is when we believe something we cannot see. Because if we, if if you would right now, Daniel, you would tell me, okay, Oscar, I'm going to give you one thousand US uh, tomorrow or in one week, let's say, in one week, I will give you one thousand US, and uh, yeah, I would be happy and I would believe it. But what if the next day I come to you and ask Daniel, are you really going to give it to me? Are you really? I I don't see it. Is it really going to happen? What I'm then doing is I'm questioning you and I'm telling that you're a liar. I'm questioning your character and I'm questioning who you are. And we are doing the same to God if he has promised us something. And later we, we start to wonder or doubt, is this really going to happen? And he showed me that when we believe, even if we don't see it, And that's when we really are displaying love to him. That's when we really touch his heart. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. It reminds me of the story of Abraham, how Abraham believed God in spite of his elder years and his wife's 
elder yeah. you know, she, she was actually pretty fine and hot into her late age i mean uh, the bible says and I, i'm praying the same thing for myself and my wife let's lord just restore our youth but we're just gonna we're just gonna camp out in that river of life flowing from the the, the throne of god flowing from your mm -hmm. the father's heart and just let it affect our bodies we're not our hair yeah. is not gonna fall out we're not gonna get excessive wrinkles we're going mm. to maintain our youth and vibrance like like mm -hmm. Moses did, whose eyes did not fail him at the age of 120. Mm. You know, I'm not even sure how he died, you know, like 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 he just probably had, oh, I guess I, I'm checking out. I mean, my body is pretty still good and, you know, it's it's, it's doing fine. Mm -hmm. you've, you, your glory has sustained me like like yeah. I want to I want us to restore return to this mm. type of glory living you know mm. I want to live a thousand years for the for yeah. this come king kingdom age yeah you I just told just... my fiance, fiance fiance that uh she said okay so because we're about to get married soon and uh I missed my second marriage but yes it's not a thing but uh like I'm, I'm like she said okay maybe we can make 40 and i said maybe we can make 50 or maybe we get 200 years and so, yeah let's let's aim for 200 years yeah at least you know the the bible speaks about the coming kingdom age and those who die at 100 will be thought to be accursed they're like mm -hmm. no this is wildly inappropriate for you to die at 100 you're just a a, a teenager what did you do <laughs> to to not yeah. you know live out your full life expectancy of a thousand mm. you know yeah like this is what i mean i i really i see this i don't know i i believe this mm. and i love what you just said like abraham believed god yeah. you know i i broke I, I tell this story as kind of a cautionary tale to people but mm. but I, there was a time a time in my life where I went to a nursing home concert, you know. After uh, a night, uh, I drank a whole bottle of strawberry wine and enjoyed mm. it. I had a wonderful time with God of of breakthrough and and prayer and wailing. All this this inner trauma was just being released, you know. Mm. And and I and I had this marvelous time with God the night before. I woke up with a hangover and realized I got to go do a concert. I go to my concert. And it was one of the sweetest, most spirit-filled concerts in spite of my pounding headache. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of the sweetest concerts I had ever played in my whole life, you know, where, where I just blessed them and just gushed the love of Jesus all over them. And they just soaked it up and they're like, oh, thank you. You were such a blessing to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you know? And, and mm -hmm. I walk out of there and God says to me, I am so proud of you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. And in some religious spirit, you know, that I had partnered with just ech echoed in my brain. I don't believe you mm -hmm. is what came out of my mouth. Wow. I don't believe you. And I, and it was mm -hmm. a soul crushing experience for God mm -hmm. as he, I broke his heart. And I knew it yeah. by saying that, mm. that I don't believe you. And he says, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. The religious spirit would say, but look at your actions. You drank the night before a whole bottle of strawberry wine. You got a, a, a big hangover. The Bible says, don't be drunk with wine. Look what you mm -hmm. did, Daniel. Shame on you. Yeah. Shame on you. That's what the religious spirit yeah. says. And God's saying, I'm so proud of you yeah yeah and oscar guess what i'm so proud of you as, <laughs> i'm just saying that as your brother just like reading your book and then and then getting to talk with you and hearing some of these things and about your walk with jesus i am so proud of you oscar i'm <laughs> so proud of you and mm. god bless you in your marriage and mm. you know like there's no shame it's just god's so proud of you yeah. Like bless your marriage, brother. And may you live a thousand years, you know. <laughs> live long and prosper. Yeah. <laughs> right?
You know, and you know what that is? I, I researched that after Leonard yeah. Nimoy passed on. He he got this from being an eight-year-old boy in 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 synagogue as a little Jewish boy and mm -hmm. watching the the these priests, these ministers of, of mm -hmm. God doing this. They're they're saying, they're saying, you know, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and give you his peace. That is his heart for you. And this represents mm -hmm. Shin, the Hebrew letter Shin, which stands for the name of God, El Shaddai, Shaddai, Shaddai. And you know what that mm -hmm. means? That's that's the mothering heart of God for you. Mm -hmm. If you can't understand it in uh, like a, some sort of stern father you know whatever hang up you got hey we got the name shaddai for you this is the mother's mm -hmm. side of god this is the tender-hearted side of god who nurtures you and holds you you're his baby and he's your nursing mama that's the picture in the name shaddai mm -hmm. you know so yeah anyway <laughs> yeah thank you yeah yeah, I, I love his different characters, and I, I love that he's not just one-sided, but he has so many sides, and he knew, knows what kind of side we need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like even in the book, the shack, him showing up as this this um, you know black woman. Mm -hmm. That's Papa. A black yeah. woman is Papa. Yeah. Ooh, there's a there's a little in your face religious spirit, you know, <laughs> like yeah. uh, uh, like like read between the lines religious spirit you know yeah. <laughs> i'm like whoa <laughs> yeah it was even hard for me to take watching the movie and hearing this black woman says yes i am god i'm like <laughs> i am the i am i'm like oh my gosh if this isn't blasphemy i don't know what is <laughs> you know yeah i mean and, if it would be wrong god god would just laugh i know and and i'm imagining god in heaven knowing him now just like yeah. this gut-wrenching laugh this laugh <laughs> like god's just laughing at yeah. all of the cringing religious spirits as he just yeah. calls us all out and exposes yeah. us all you know and i'm just like you know jesus when he showed up on the scene he's like none of you know me you know and yeah. they had the scriptures and they had it all memorized and they had all their religious traditions yeah. and and all of this and, and he's like none of you know me i came to mm. reveal who the father really is yeah. And I will reveal him and I will continue to reveal him, you know, to yeah. you. And and here here he's saying to, to Paul Young, William Paul Young, this is my boy. Listen to him. He's got mm -hmm. he's got some insight into who I am and yeah. putting him center stage. I've got I had I got to interview William Paul Young a few times on my show. Uh -huh, cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how you stumbled upon my channel. Um, how did you? I saw Aaron. <laughs> oh, Aaron, Aaron. The on you, and and uh, yeah, I'm also going into the mystics, and I saw that you had a, like a book about it, and yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I and have, then, uh, yeah, yeah. The the book sample is out there. It's uh, like just a five chapter thing right uh -huh. now called the Christian Mystic, but but I'm actually finishing up the whole thing, and and, and I don't know, mm -hmm. Lord willing. Hey, Lord willing. Uh, that will be, you know, uh, ready by Christmas. I want to give it to Jesus as a Christmas gift. Here you go, oh, Jesus. Cool. <laughs> Let's yeah. get this whole thing out here. Yeah, um, that's really cool. So, what does it mean to you to be a mystic? Mystic, someone that uh, discovers and explores the mysteries of God, uh, and like Jesus said also in the Bible, that you will do more than I have done. Greater things than I have done, you will do. Okay, but where in the Bible are those things? <laughs> they are not there. So mystery mystics is about dis discovering this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> getting to know the Father. Ask yeah. crazy questions. And dare to believe that you hear God. And get answers about this. Yeah. Dare to believe that you hear God. Isn't that what your book is about? Let's talk about your book <laughs> some more. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
how to hear God's voice, right? Yeah. How to hear God's voice. Tell well, us about the book and the writing of that. It's it's a short book. Um, and God told me also that he didn't want it to be so long because people believe it's so hard to hear it. And it's a so big topic. But the whole point of this book is to... Uh, uh, how do you say, de-dramatize or undramatize the, the um, how do you say, like, how hard it is to hear God's voice. Yeah, because I would even say, I would even say normalize. That's another word we could choose to yeah. use to normalize hearing God's voice. That basically with that message, you hear God better than you think you do. You know, exactly. to everybody. Yeah. And like, as we already touched on the topic before that, he's our father. And we want, like, if he's our father, we are his sons. And you hear your father's voice. I mean, and he wants you to hear it. I mean, how would you otherwise be able to be formed and shaped by him? Imagine if you if you would never hear your father say a single word. How would you then know what he thinks about you, what you're supposed to do? Um, for him to like you or be pleased how 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 would you know what is his will for you or his desire for you it would be impossible you would just guess all the time and hope that you're good enough but it would never be rooted inside of you and you would never really know that okay my father is pleased with me yeah people need to hear that that yeah papa is pleased with you yeah mm. Yeah, and it's wow. not it's not defined on what you do. It's defined on who you are. Yeah, and and what you do will come out of you knowing who you are. So a restoring of identity here is really important. Yeah, I think. Yes. And pretty soon you your your mother Teresa, you know, pouring yourself out for the least of these because yeah. That's that's who you are. That's out of identity. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And what and what this book did, because he told me, like, first of all, I didn't think I would be able to write this book. But God told me that, okay, you can do it. And I felt for a long time I was supposed to write a book about something, but I didn't know about what. And I was even, like, frustrated. And, and I asked God, okay, show me. Whatever you show me, I will write about it. Because I only want to do his will all the time and then i had a dream about writing a book about how to hear his voice so i wrote this book and when i started to write this i only wrote it when i had it was under the anointing of the of the father because i didn't want to write it in my own understanding i wanted to write it when he was with me maybe it was religious but that was how i thought so oh, I, I can i can totally heart like wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment like uh, if i if i want if i want to write on behalf of god i'm like you know it says in the bible if anyone speaks let him speak the oracles of god i mean you got to be in that flow state that zen flow state channeling god basically mm -hmm. like like yeah. like just like the, the 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 people who penned the bible were, wrote as as they were moved by the holy spirit um these are this should be the the norm for all christian writing really yeah. is to is to convey the heart and one thing the lord spoke to me hmm. when i right away as i was reading your book was so what do you need how how much do you need me to pizzazz up the truth hmm. pizzazz up the truth to to get you to believe it to get mm. you to just ah rest in that, rest in the truth of where I've placed you in my grace. You know, mm. how how blessed you are by El Shaddai. Mm. You know, uh, how do I have to pizzazz it up to get you to believe it? Because because like the way you delivered it was just like, wow, this is like really just simple, stated. <laughs> I mean, you you put in the pertinent scriptures, it just flows and boom 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 there it is and i'm like mm. okay wow that was very direct and to the point and you know it didn't mm. it didn't need to be pizzazzed up you know just to mm. to convey that 
like like you know you know what i mean like okay so well it's a new word for me possessed up but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> possess yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so um but yeah like yeah i mean it's supposed to be demystified that was the word i was looking for for like like people believe that okay if you have been with god for 20 or 30 or 40 years then you can maybe hear something hmm. but, <laughs> or only the pastors that dedicate their whole day to listen to god they will hear god no like it's about believing and that was what god showed to me the book like most of people don't even believe they can hear god's voice so the point of my book is to just build the faith that you can hear it I mean, I mean, just imagine, imagine all the people on the planet just like typing into Google, how do we hear God's voice? And then they just land on your book, you know, yeah, that would how, be to hear, cool. how to hear God's voice. Boom. Oh, yeah. here, here, Oscar is going to, Oscar is awesome. I mean, uh, well, how could we not listen to Oscar? He's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what does Oscar have to say? And it's just like, yeah. here it is. Boom. <laughs> you can hear God's voice. You already yeah. hear it better than you think you do. And in yeah. fact, yeah, it's just great. I love it. <laughs> yes. And I mean, even like we hear it, even if we don't know about it. Like it could, I have never heard his physical voice like Oscar, this is father speaking. No, I have only had ideas in my head or I have had feelings or sensations or like thoughts that maybe I should do this or, or have been like free writing something or i have seen a vision but i've never had a physical voice so i mean i believe even the non-christians hear his voice yeah 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 he's at work uh the holy spirit has been poured out on all flesh mm. and he is working toward the redemptive end in mind for all and he never gives up love never fails and that is really yeah. the message of ultimate reconciliation can be summed up just by one single verse and the last enemy to be defeated is death <laughs> death meaning any sense of separation from the one who is life mm -hmm. so the the, the the any sense of separation shall be dissolved and that is the end of death yeah. you know and it, and it's a guarantee that that's that's going to happen and then there's like yeah. a new heavens and a new earth the old is gone and new has come behold i make all things new mm -hmm. jesus says when we're all back home when we're all reconciled mm -hmm. when we're all so wrapped up in forgiveness and grace and restoration and forgiving ourselves for not loving jesus that's mm. what hell is. We're punishing ourselves for not loving Jesus. And he says, mm. no, I won't let you punish yourself anymore. Mm. You know, when he yeah. embraces us and says, don't no, no to shame, <laughs> no to regret. And we're no longer bound up. You mm. know, we're, we're instead free to be authorities in our own right, to be kings yeah and uh, kings and priests of god you know on this planet for the next thousand years cheers to that oscar <laughs> cheers to that oscar may we live a thousand years live long and prosper brother yeah, <laughs> but yeah it's from a show called odd squad oscar is awesome it's it's lovely but uh so what were we chatting about? Let's let's just let's just connect with the host of heaven. Let's connect with Father's heart right now, and just as a way of of conveying His heart, ministering to one to another, first first of all, and then to any listener who uh, and any passerby who stumbles across this video on YouTube, that they too can be in real time receivers of a direct prophetic word from the mm. heart of father from the heart of jesus yeah. let's go there <laughs> what do you say yeah. i actually have a word for you daniel okay uh, i didn't know if it was appropriate or not to do it here but go ahead 
Okay. Yeah, I see that God right now is redeeming your time. And I see that you have put some things in a basket and that basket got broken. And uh, like you were hoping for something and something got lost. But God is right now redeeming it. So I see how he's laughing behind the scenes and what got broken, what, what got lost. He's actually using it to make something new, something beautiful right now in your life. Mm. Thank you. I and, see that. And I see you like Albert Einstein. Like I see you like a person that has a lot of ideas, like crazy, like coming up with different things and trying different things. And I hear how God is saying that this time you succeed. This new recipe that you are right now cooking up inside of your head is going to succeed. Okay, because that's a little freaky to me because, you know, what's going on in my head right now is connecting to the Arcturians. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, can you imagine the look on people's faces when they hear that? Like... <laughs> Like I had a dream once where I was shown all these doors mm. and the angels with me said, you can knock on any door and it will be open to you. Mm. Be careful. Be careful, Daniel, which doors you knock on. Mm. You know what? You know what doors I, I most want to knock on <laughs> is doors of intimacy and friendship with mm -hmm. Jesus wow. and, and making his name famous and, and yeah. connecting people to him. Yeah, you know, I do also entertain as a as a you know sweet little innocent boy that I am in, at heart uh, ideas of of flying. I had a dream where I was flying the other night, and my friends are like, "Look at Daniel go!" You know, like, and I'm just, whoosh, you know, like, ah, oh, you know. And I've had so many dreams about that. I'm mm. Like, all right, levitation. I think that's the next step here, and yes. telekinesis. I, I literally had a conversation with Philip Aaron McKenzie mm -hmm. just the other day, and we did a little interview uh, while he's sitting at a bus station, mm -hmm. you know, and we're talking about telekinesis, <laughs> and we're talking about levitation, and I'm like, <laughs> yay, this is fun, this is fun, like this, yeah. that's kind of the boyish heart of Daniel, kind of giddy about, you know, really sticking into the religious spirit by... Mm -hmm. by bringing that stuff up yeah. why not you yeah know? and you know that <laughs> yeah all, all that's involved in being a christian mystic yeah and i see that you are a, a key keeper i didn't even know those those that word existed but you're a key keeper meaning that you carry keys that people need hmm. so you're not called to the to please the masses but you're called to speak to one and God uses your platform to speak to the person that you need to speak. If only one person hears your message that you want to share, you are doing more than enough. Yeah, that that reminds me of a story, and I'm just going to go with it. A near-death experience story, perhaps. I don't know what where I heard this. I, mm. I do research near-death experience stories. Mm. and have done so for a decade i bring that up just because i've derived a lot of benefit from doing so mm. and, I, and i would recommend that journey to others because mm -hmm. it's been a, an amazing ride for me and and i think it's a, a fast track to awakening mm -hmm. if you do that if you start studying yeah. near-death experience stories because the lord our father our papa and yeshua and the holy spirit they are working in all kinds of wonderful messages for humanity through mm. these near-death experience stories. These people mm. encounter God and come back with a message from God to share with humanity, you know? And, you know, some of the interesting things I've come across in my near-death experience studies has, I, I interviewed Howard Storm as one of my first interviews on my on my podcast on YouTube. And my my primary question, what I was really wanting to go after was how he talked about in, in his book about in, how Jesus showed him all these different uh, life forms on other planets mm -hmm. and in other universes and how mm -hmm. they started out very humanoid looking and then getting less so. 
sentient beings, mm-hmm. you know, sentient beings we're talking about, you know, and, and the earth is populated with forms of all of these other extraterrestrial life uh, on planet earth, like all what we call animals have their sentient version in universes and other planets throughout all of the scope of what God's doing. And we are we, like it being created in the image of God. I mean, they're all part of expressions of God too, yeah. you know, yeah. and that within the very human DNA, like it, inca- it, it includes all of that mm. too. Like there's a universe of everything in within us. Yeah. Yeah. It's all very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and and it reminds me of one one encounter I've had, uh, and it was actually at Aaron's place. I visited Aaron in Switzerland a couple of times. With Aaron yeah. Philip Aaron Mackenzie. Yes. 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 Um, so uh, I was at his place, and uh, like I just only got an idea that I want to know how God really looks like. So I asked him, okay, God, show me how he really looked like. And um, then I saw neutrons and, and protons swirling around in gold. So that is how God looks like. And he can take, I understood, he can take whatever shape he wants to. It's just different facets of, of him. The Father is one facet, the Son is one facet, the Holy Spirit is one facet. But also in the Bible, there is a lamb, there is a lion. And there's an ox, other things as well. I don't know all of them, but he can take whatever facet he wants to. Yeah, yeah. amen, amen. I, I, I too recall the seraphim and, and uh, these beings that are full of eyes, and then, mm-hmm. you know, the ox and the eagle and the man and the, the seraphim and all being represented there. Yeah. The, the four faces uh, of Christ. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> and we are we are created from his his uh, his energy from yeah. this neutron and protons. Yeah, like we are originally from that thing, and I, I believe that the more we allow ourselves to think outside of the box and not l- allow this to limit us, because what we see is what we perceive. But if we close our eyes and look even deeper, even more beyond then we're able to see the truth see what's really there and what's really there (laughs) yeah love 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 yeah you know one of the things that was said in my last interview that i published Mm -hmm. uh, by daniel somerville and i really latched onto it and i've been using it ever since he said Mm -hmm. we live in a benevolent universe and I just like that phrase, benevolent universe. And of course we do. God is love in mm. whom we live and move and have our being. We live in a benevolent universe. Yeah. And and everything is meant to proclaim his glory in different ways love is expressed. Mm. And of course, some civilizations and some some we're talking about parts of him. Like one third of heaven fell. One third of God mm. fell, yeah. you know, and the yeah. and the rest, the rest, rushed to the rescue operation project mm. yeah. to bring us all home. And then, in so doing, in the rescuing, we become the lost and the fallen too. Mm. Like what? We come to understand what it's like. We come in to bring. Mm. We come in to bring understanding. To mm-hmm. all the lost and fallen, and it's that understanding that mm. then that then heals them, you know. Yeah. And we're able to come home ourselves and bring them with us. Mm. And that's yeah. that's literally why I prayed. I mean, I'm, I'm I literally pray things like, Jesus, just shower. If there's a demon tormenting me right now, I like right now, boom, I I boldly come before your throne of grace and mercy right mm-hmm. here, right yeah. now, and I'm bringing this demon with me. I'm grabbing him by mm-hmm. the nape of the neck. You know, not to punish him, 
Mm -hmm. burn demon you know with all this vengeance no that he might mm -hmm. be showered with love to be reconciled unto the father that this mm -hmm. demon can be restored to his truest identity just in the same way that this demon has been restored to his truest identity as a son of god you know as an i we also are his offspring you know yeah. you know i i'm into this kind of stuff I'm into this kind of ultimate reconciliation mm -hmm. happening. And may mm -hmm. I be a force for that in this world. And no matter what darkness I encounter, we're going to bring mm -hmm. the love of Jesus to bear yeah. upon this. Yeah. Reconciling love of the Father. Reconciling mm -hmm. love of the Father. And of course, that's what the lake of fire is too. Mm -hmm. You know, that Jesus is a consuming fire. The presence of God is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. You know, who of us can dwell with everlasting burning was a question mm -hmm. posed in Isaiah 33. Mm -hmm. You know, he who has yeah. clean hands and a pure heart can dwell with everlasting burning mm -hmm. because you become one of the everlasting burning ones yeah. as part of the everlasting burning mm -hmm. one. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we should be going out to the Burning Man ceremonies and bringing <laughs> this message to all the all those hippies. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was, I was on a roll there. That was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. Now, now you go on a roll. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I believe what the enemy wants us to do is to forget that we are supernatural beings. That we have, same as the, I was mentioned in the book, but it has been my life message that we are a spirit, we live in a body, and we have a soul. Our enemy wants us to forget this. He wants to make everything that's happening around us into reality. Like when we don't have enough money, or when we're not happy, or when we have problems here or there. This is actually what we are living with, but that's not true. We're supposed to be over this. And to define and, and to decide what happens to us, we're supposed to rule and reign as kings and priests already here on earth. We're supposed to declare what we want to see. If, if I'm in need of money, then I, I need to, to say, that, okay, thank you, Father, I have this money. And then thank until we have it. Not every day come and ask again and again and again and again. Because every time we ask again, we're nullifying the first prayer. Because... We didn't have enough faith for it. So if we ask one time, then we will receive it. And then we ask and we thank him until we receive it because he has already heard us the first time. So we are supposed to be above and then define what had happened to us. And of course, he has his own will and he knows what he's doing. And sometimes he takes us on a path that we don't think is the right path, but he knows the best. Yeah, that's beautiful. Lord's been telling me, uh, teaching me a lot about authority mm. to be an authority means to be an author of reality. Mm. You no, know? and and I for the longest time I doubted myself. You know, mm. like oh, I don't know if you want me to be an author of reality, God. <laughs> you know, and and I've just give it back to him you mm -hmm. know and, and and really in that i saw that the elders right in uh, the 24 elders casting mm. down their their crowns before the king mm. how are they able to continue to do this unless the king is putting crowns right back on their heads <laughs> and so it's like this you know what it is it's this continual infinite flow of mm. mutual submission you're the king. No, 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 you're the king. Back and forth from Yeshua to us. Yeah. And him being that, being that salvation centering point of mm. contact, someone we could really trust, someone mm. we can really worship, someone we can really say, no, you're the king. You know, you be the king in me and through me, you know? And it's mm -hmm. this infinite loop of like, we're being authorities. We're getting to be authorities, authors of reality. Yeah. Yeah. Kings. And he's the king of kings. 
and yeah. he's living in us all and he is doing his kingly business through us every day especially mm -hmm. and only as we stay in this I would say only as we stay, because without me, you can do nothing, Jesus says, as we mm. stay in this flow state of yeah. worship, mm. you know, that he's, he's, he's sending the worship right back to his bride. Okay. Mm. Okay. Because we're in union. He, he worships the bride and the bride mm. worships him. Mm. That's good. You know, it's this infinite flow of worship, mm. of worthy ship. You are worthy to mm. wear the crown. You yeah. are worthy to wear the crown. You yeah. are worthy to wear the crown. And so that needs to be in our hearts. Like Jesus, mm. to say to Jesus, you are worthy to yeah. bear the crown. And that's yeah. that's why the Bible says, set apart Christ as Lord, as mm. the husband, as the master, as mm. Sarah said of Abraham, right? Yeah. 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 So that's that's what I've been learning about authority. And it's been so beautiful. Mm. It's good. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Author of, of yeah, reality. Wow, that's yeah. <laughs> that's true. And also like when Father sees us, he says he says Jesus. He sees Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like he sees Jesus because uh, we have been redeemed by his blood. We have already been washed clean and, and we are covered in him. We are inside of Jesus. We are one with him. And I believe when we realize when we get into the identity of that we are sons and we are his sons that's when we are really inside of the authority and as you say we can co-create with him we can create what we want to see around us help our people our friends the society whatever and we can also spread the love because what they actually need is love amen coming back to that message you know and and i was really struck by that not not only in first corinthians 13 where it's really it's really talking about your love we're mm -hmm. not just talking about oh here's a description of god's love no it's saying it's really mm -hmm. confronting us right from the start if we if we mm -hmm. uh understand all these prophecies and all the mysteries mm -hmm. of the universe and have not loved we are nothing you know it's yeah. really emphasizing no you are the love you mm -hmm. are the love in the world. And First John 4, too, again, mm -hmm. whereas I like to focus on, oh, God is love. No, the, the whole chapter is, is and the book, really, the book, really, mm -hmm. the letter is, no, you're the love. You're yeah. the love. You're the love. Mm -hmm. You're the love. Because you, mm -hmm. you are loved. And, and really, that's the, the horse before the cart, so to speak, as I like mm -hmm. to say it, is like, you're loved. And that's what, that's what, you know, pulls the card of you are love you are yeah. love you are love yeah and he has already qualified us like we already qualified we already deserve what we have what he has given us or what he wants to give us we don't need to reach somewhere and when we realize this that okay i'm already on the place i don't need to reach somewhere that's when we are free when we get free and he keeps on reminding me right now about this picture that kenneth hagen got uh, when he uh, he saw Jesus talking to him and then suddenly the, the, the devil jumped in front of him and he couldn't hear what Jesus was saying and he has kept on talking to Jesus and, and he didn't say, hear because the devil was in the front and then he got, got angry later after and told Jesus why didn't you tell the devil to go then Jesus said that I couldn't. I have given you all the authority to to tell him to go. You have all the rights. You just need to tell him just to go, and he would have gone. But yeah, it was your, your thing. Oh, Oscar, thank you so much for reminding us of these important things. You know, it's like you have a different. You have a special uh, message. You know, of like that was an, that was a special message just then. You have the authority to tell the devil to go yeah know? um oh my gosh we could we could go into a conversation about spiritual warfare and what, what yeah. overcomers we really truly are victorious because the blood of christ and mm -hmm. the word of our testimony the word of us mm -hmm. testifying the word of us speaking it out speaking reality into existence yeah like thank you god first of all 
I ask for this. And then a thank you, God. And then, you know, standing standing in faith, right? Mm -hmm. and, and these things being made manifest. I mean, people tell us this, right? You, mm -hmm. I mean, like, like just how manifestation works. You mm -hmm. believe you have it already. You believe yes. you have it already. And you you just settle into those feelings of i have this the emotion mm -hmm. of it the belief yeah. steadfast and firm yeah right? and that's yeah. faith that we're speaking mm -hmm. of yeah. manifestation is faith mm. oh, yes. yeah and we can become anyone anyone we want to we can become the right next Rainer Bonke or the next Benny Hinn or whoever wants to. The the one that is standing against it is me. Yeah, yeah. If I if I <laughs> when you say that, I'm like, who would I want to be? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? And I'm like, how far outside of the religious confines that the church would impose mm -hmm. do I have to be? To, to be free and and who I'm called to be, you yeah. know, because I feel like I've always just been, you know, flirting with it, but like mm -hmm. never really saying whatever, whatever it is. Okay. So for instance, Oscar, I'll just tell you my mm -hmm. last blog post, I, I didn't post a blog for a good, maybe two years mm -hmm. because the last blog post I posted on daniellovett.com was when Jesus uh, appeared to me just behind this wall, I was sleeping wow. and Jesus showed up and he's standing over me and he said, Daniel, and he's just got such a joyful, you know, <laughs> personality. He's just so brimming full of joy. Mm -hmm. And he says, Daniel, go and tell all your friends if they want to get to know me. Mm -hmm. And then he showed me a vision of me holding mm. up the the gospel of, the the gospel of John pointing to chapter 1 as mm. if to say marinate your mind in this mm. marinate your mind in this you know John chapter 1 that was the last blog post i had from like 2 years ago and i'm mm. like i'm done like i could die and that could be my last blog post and that's it mm. why do i need to keep posting anything this is this is it this is mm -hmm. Daniel's life message. Why would I mm -hmm. confuse it with anything less than this? Mm -hmm. You know? And and so, um, but I'm like, do I, uh, do I never blog again? <laughs> you know? So I'm trying to get back into blogging and I'm like, because I'm like, I want to practice my writing and everything and blogging is a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I blogged two posts. One, which one was called, Yeshua, the man, the myth, the legend, you mm. know, and just had kind of some comedy in there. Um, and then my next blog post was sharing about holotropic breathing and how that has blessed me over the years and how I've had encounters with Jesus mm. through just breath work, you know, and how where Jesus took me in that he took me to healing my chakras. All of a sudden we're at the red chakra and, mm. and we're just he's administering life and health as the great physician to my chakras and we're working our way up i'm anxious to get to the heart chakra and the the moment i do we do the moment i do it starts looping with the red chakra and i'm like well, what's that all about what what's going on with that and he's mm -hmm. like father's heart wants you to know that you're safe survival mm -hmm. was never the issue for you Daniel. Yeah. it's not no survive like that needs to be a done deal you're not mm -hmm. in survival mode anymore yeah. my, that's my heart for you daniel and i'm like wow cool <laughs> thank you you know and that was all through just holotropic breathing mm -hmm. you know but but then i'm worried after the fact i'm like i know i just offended a bunch of religious spirits by the mention of chakras and light bodies i mean i could mm -hmm. you know what else am i going to bring up in the sanskrit language you know prana what, what namaste what am i going to do next that's going to offend the nom the the mm -hmm. religious spirit by just using awesome words in a different language you know talking <laughs> about breath and i recognize the divine spark in you you know mm -hmm. and and you know, glory to the shining remover of darkness. 
you know, which is a line from a Beatles song. Jai mm. Guru Deva means glory to the shining remover of darkness in Sanskrit. There's a lot of amazing things we can pray and say in the Sanskrit language that's going to no. scare a lot of Christians just because, ooh, that's, ooh, you know, and I'm going to get blacklisted and kicked out of the homeschool co-op, mm -hmm. you know, the Christian homeschool co-op because Daniel's a new ager, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just like, what do, what, what do I got to do? How far outside of the confines of the strict religious community uh, imposed on us do I have to go to, to be free to share everything that God wants me to share with people? You know? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's well, where I'm at. We are not supposed to fit in. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are supposed to say the truth. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just kind of sad when it's like I'm not even fitting in with the Christian community. This is supposed to be my yeah. brothers, my comrades in in this rescue operation mission where we all came <laughs> on to save the world, to save the lost and fallen, to bring understanding, you know, and forgiveness, the message of mm -hmm. forgiveness to everyone, even the child molesters, yeah. even the pedophiles. But, but it, oh. Yeah, but if if we would try to fit in, and then we wouldn't even meet Jesus. The Pharisees would never meet Jesus if they would want to fit in. Yeah. But but God will bring, and he will do it right now to you, if it, if you need it, he will bring the, the brothers and sisters that you need that will encourage you and bring you the love and the understanding and and knit you together in the network that you need. Yeah. Just allow him to bring the friends you need. Yeah. I've certainly found some of them in the likes of like John, Justin Paul Abraham or mm -hmm. Philip Aaron McKenzie. Yeah. I love our, both of them. Yeah. Our dear friends, you know, mm -hmm. and I have a few others. I mean, I'm even actually in a church that's really open arms to 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 the likes of daniel lovett and i and i don't understand it and i'm like don't you know your attendance is gonna go down the more you highlight me the more you bring attention to me this church is going to empty mm. you know that's what i'm worried about um, mm. and uh you know i've even geez i've even heard reports of how somebody said they they can't worship what when i'm up there playing guitar or singing Oh, I just can't worship when that guy's up there. What if you're uh, called to break the religion? <laughs> yeah, I, I sign me up. Sure, it's like fighting um, against the Nazis. Yeah, like, and that seriously. was what God, what God told me lately. Um, like I went to Israel, as you know, and the whole trip there, He was just showing me that you're called Oscar to break religion, and like one thing that happened there was like so amazing that I cannot even understand why I was going through it but he was just showing it to me that we were allowed it to go to the place where Jesus had the last supper yeah they have this as a place um and uh, like when I was there like um we like they allowed us to wash our feet there. They never did do, do, do this to, to people. They, they allowed us to bring, because every holy place in Israel, I don't know if you have been there, they have built a church there. So all, like, it's like really commercial. And uh, when I was there, like one person, like we were on a, on a trip, uh, it is, was called Curated Tours with Mary Christie, I really recommend it. Like she was praying and asking God where she should bring us, what she should do, because she wanted to, to invite the Holy Spirit in the trip. It wasn't just the usual tour. But so we were there and they brought down the silver plates and the silver things. And they had also uh, talked with the church that, can we please have some food and just eat here? No, you cannot eat in this room, but you can eat up in the corner on the on the um, terrace or something like this. So we were kind of in the room, but still not in the room. Anyway, so first we ate chicken and rice there. 
and uh, like it was supposed to symbolize that we were doing the, the last supper on the same place and then after that we had also dessert and uh, it was some dados and i went in the toilets and after the toilet i went out and i, I thought okay i will bring some dados with me then they call, okay, we need to come back down here. Someone is talking to talk me. So we go back into the place again. And I also had a banana. I started to eat it. They started to eat it there. And then they said, oh, you cannot eat here right now. And uh, I didn't know that. I was just freely doing it. And then God had told me, like, do you know what you're doing right now? You're breaking the religion. And I called it to do it. And I was the only guy ever in the whole world, in the whole history that has done it. Breaking religion. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I was just doing it. Well, and... yeah, we have plenty of reason. I don't know about you, but I've been beat up and abused mercilessly by the mm. spirit of religion for most of my life. I yeah. I would say I have a vendetta. Mm -hmm. Vendetta. Yeah. I, have look, yeah. I have to look that word up because that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> but I'm not sure exactly what that means. Yeah, and like we're I think standing I up one. for the truth. <laughs> we're standing up for the truth. We're standing up for freedom. We're standing up for the love. We're standing up for the real God, and that's what people yeah. need. Yeah. Like we are not here to have an awesome life. We're here to to glorify Him and to do what He wants us to do. And the moment we start to think that oh, maybe I need to fit in, or maybe I should uh, like twist it a little bit there, or say a little bit here, or then we're compromising what He wants to do. Yeah. All right. For all our listeners, we've been uh, talking with Oscar Lindbergh from Sweden. Oscar is awesome. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll drink to that. Oscar is awesome. <laughs> Daniel is awesome. And uh, he's got a book out, a very short book, very direct book called... How to Hear God's Voice, which you can pick up for about five bucks on Amazon. I bought mine today. Go out and support Oscar by buying yours and be blessed. Take the message to heart. You can hear God's voice. Oscar, mm -hmm. would you like to close us with any words of wisdom about hearing God's voice and how you <clears throat> practice hearing God's voice in your life? Uh, sure. Well, it starts with believing or no, not believing, sorry. Let's say it like this. It's easier than you think to hear God's voice. The only thing you need to do is just to believe that you can hear it. Quiet yourself down. Allow all the troubles, all the worries to be carried by God. Give them to Him. And then just empty yourself and allow Him to speak. And, uh, yeah. Amen. It's that simple. See, we didn't even need... A three-minute explanation that was 30 seconds of direct awesome intel about how you too can hear the voice of god <laughs> oh, excuse me Bless you. something's on my throat all right um let's see <laughs> i'll have to edit this part out because i'm coughing a lot but uh, thank you for that, Oscar. And uh, I really appreciate this this friendship. It was funny. I remember doing like a YouTube live and you were, you just kind of tuned in. And I'm like, who wants to join me live sometime? And you're like, I will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sent me an email. <laughs> so we, we made it happen. Yeah. And uh, so, so dear listener, you can be the next person live on Daniel Lovett YouTube channel. All right, of awesomeness. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be here, really. And uh, yeah, it was really also giving me a lot to speak to you and reminding me of things. It was really not good. Good. Yeah, stay you, you gave me some keys. You gave me some keys. Yay! The, key, the key, key keeper, Daniel, is giving keys again. Yay, I love it. So I, I just pray a blessing over you and your fiance. May you have a very happy and very long life together mm -hmm. and just continue to be a blessing to one another and, and growing in love to all everyone you meet. Oscar, mm -hmm. thanks for speaking out. Thanks for being mm -hmm. a voice. 
Yeah. And I pray also for you, Daniel, I pray that you will get new boldness to stand up for the truth and stand up for what God has called you to do. And right now in Jesus' name, I break all the fears and all the things that has wanted to come to you against you, that wants to compromise you or keep you down or just lock you. And I break them right now in Jesus' name. I call for angels right now to come with the key and unlock you and set you free right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that you have a plan for Daniel. You have a place for Daniel. <laughs> you have a place for Daniel. And I just call it forth right now in Jesus' name. And I just reset right now in Jesus' name everything that has been uh, put out of place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Yeshua. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have a YouTube channel, by the way? I don't, only a personal one. Oh, only a personal one? Okay. Well, at any rate, maybe or maybe I, I do have. Yeah, I do have one. Yeah, but I haven't paid for it. I don't know how it works, but yeah, I yeah, did it's, once. It's it's free. You just start yeah, broadcasting. Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, I think I do. Great. Well, we'll stay in touch, okay, Oscar? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for being my friend, and namaste. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, namaste. That's it. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.